My name is Latika. I just recently got to know about you and it's my first time over here. And this is a practice that I've been doing for the last three years where I just witness myself, try to be a witness to my own sensations and emotions. And uh, I've had a fair bit of success in terms of being able to witness and then move to a more calmer and peaceful space. But especially in the last couple of days, there are moments where I actually feel powerless in front of my emotions. I know what am I feeling, I know it's an illusion, I can break it down, I can write it down, go to the source, yet it still has absolute power over me and in those moments I have no idea what to do with them. The reason why you have this experience is because when you, through different means, put yourself in Sakshi Bhav, you know, Sakshi Bhav, it's witness consciousness. It's where you are observing everything as if you are separate from it. What happens a lot of the times is that there is an initial period of exaltation, of triumph almost, and that is then replaced with a helplessness because you at one point get overtaken by that which you are observing. And the reason for that is that Sakshi Bhav is actually not something to attempt as a sadhana. It is an experience that happens as you move along a path of self-realization, which is actually a path of surrender, while listening or tuning in to the source of your being, to the, to the antaratman, to the soul. So you're tuning in actually to the master within. Rather than you, Latika, observing it all, you tune in and surrender to that master. So what happens is, is that everything around you starts to transform. Because putting yourself in a Sakshi Bhav or witness consciousness state doesn't mean you have transformed that which is causing you that emotional upheaval. This is a misunderstanding and misrepresentation of what Advaita Vedanta is or, or even just the spiritual search as is practiced currently in large parts of the world by spiritual seekers. It's an attempt to observe. It's an attempt to, to separate from that which is happening to you. The pain, a lot of the times it's the emotional pain, it's the suffering, it's the misery, it's the, it's the challenges that you want to overcome. And instead of approaching everything in a deep, state of surrender, bent down and operating from the source, from the, from the agnya or the command of the, of the inner residing truth, the antaratman, the source, the truth, love, life, there are many words for it. What you do is to separate from what is happening and enjoy that experience of freedom from those emotions. But they still remain. The entire circumstance, the entire world around you remains untransformed. And so, this is not a process of transformation. Sakshi Bhava, witness consciousness, happens along the path of surrender. Surrender is the main word which is forgotten. <laughs> A lot of the teachers on the circuits, they do mention it, but it's not given the degree of importance which it needs to be given. It's the crucial word. So where is the surrender? Right, it's a simple thing. You can just step out of this mess right now, you know? 
And the way you step out of this mess is start to accept this as this, you know? This, 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 this. It's, it's you, Latika, daughter of Prabha. Prabha from Pune, Punya Nagari, it's called now, right? Or used to be called. That's what you are, and the transformational process happens not through observation of what is happening to this, but this is in surrender, this is bending. And what is it bending to? It's bending to the source, the master within, the antar guru. You know, we say in Sanskrit, antar guru. Antar guru means the inner residing guru. That's where the bending happens. The other bending is all just a training for that. You bend in front of your parents, you touch their feet, you, you go to the temples, you bend in front of the gods, you bend in front of the gurus, but the final destination is is that. So the surrender process has to start now. You cannot, you cannot separate yourself from what's happening and then expect that it's going to transform and change. Once you're back in the situation, it'll overwhelm you and even more than before. So try to make that process of going into a state of surrender, of bending to that inner master. You can feel it, it's a soul, somewhere it is, you know, and gradually you'll, you'll move beyond the noise of the ego, of the ahankar, and you'll, you'll start to feel it, that there is something there which is actually guiding you, it guided you when you were a small baby, you were free, you could just go with the command, with the agnya of the, of the antaratman, of the soul, of the source, of the truth. And then as you socialized, the ego grew and grew and grew, obviously. You know, the socialization process is also a expansion of ahankar, of ego. And then we know what happens after that. So it's like shedding all those layers piercing beyond them to that, it's a practical thing. This is not some cosmic state which you have to attain. There's no attainment involved. It's something everyone can reach very much with the eyes open, present. The meditation is the being present, here and now, with the eyes open. You know, you, if you walk here in Rishikesh, you can see many people who are not present. They're very floaty. They sort of not in touch with the reality of thisness, of this presentness. And that is an aberration. That is not realization. It is actually a step away from realization. So it has to be reversed, that process. So surrender, uh, that's where I head towards. But a lot of times what happens is the mind still wants to stay stuck in that loop where it's still very hopeful of getting some kind of fulfillment from the outside. Sometimes I give in to that temptation and start moving out in the world. And the moment I do that, there is an emotional breakdown, I come back to myself. There's again this powerlessness in this loop as well, where the hope doesn't go away of finding fulfillment in the world, in the worldly things. But it is the world in which we have to find fulfillment. It is the world that we have to embrace. If that were not the case, why then are you in a body? Why are you in this world? if it is not the world that is to be embraced. It's simply how you perceive that embracing. What are you embracing?
from what I understand about what you just said, it's like you're quiet within yourself, observing all these emotions happening to you, and then you have a sense of peace and equanimity. But then, at one point, the world comes and wants to claim its, its space in your life, and that's when you lose that equanimity, because you get involved. And, and it eventually leads to hurt and pain, so... Yes. It won't lead to hurt and pain if you embrace everything as a servant of the soul and not as the master of what's going on. You can only master it in a state of servitude and surrender to your own soul. You cannot master it otherwise. How? Because let's assume you go into a deep state of meditation. It's wonderful. These are experiences that are powerful and are also necessary for the seeker to experience. But they are not a way to self-realization. They are not, because the more you go into deeper and deeper states of meditation, the further and further away you are from the harsh and crass reality of this world around you. And you may put yourself into Sakshi Bhav, you may put yourself into a state of neti neti, neti neti meaning I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not the other, I'm not the third and the fourth. Those are not sadhanas, they are realizations. You know the difference? So many people, they start their spiritual journeys, their seekings with these ideas that if they start with the neti neti, for example, which is, I'm not this, I'm not that, refusing to relate to anything, that that will lead them to a state of an expanded consciousness that, that then allows them to rid themselves of the pain and suffering that being in this world actually means. But what happens generally is that it becomes a mental exercise and at one point, the mental exercise results in the person alienating themselves from what is happening around. So the observer and the observed, and then you have the observer observing the observed. Who is observing the observed? And then you have seven and eight and nine and ten layers of this, until one point you're standing in front of the mental institution. That's what is happening a lot, you know. Why? because that one important word is forgotten in this process, and that word is surrender. Can you break down the process of surrender for me? What surrender is, is basically to start to listen to the master of your being, the truth, the soul, the source, and to be able to discern between the loud, voice of the ego and the very, 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 very quiet, non-insisting, almost imperceptible, almost silent impulse of the soul. The soul is impulsing you all the time, you know. You could ask the question then, what is this soul thing? And the soul is something which one feels when one stops listening to all the noise around, the noise of the ego, the noise of society, with all its ideas about what is right and wrong, and all of that, you know, messy masala, then you can listen to it. So you keep yearning for the impulse of the soul. It is a sadhana. The approach is not, now I want it and I'm going to get it. No, because it's not going to show itself to you like that. It has to be a humility, a humbleness, a bending, you know. I yearn for the Master to reveal itself. That is the approach. Then it will reveal. So each action, 
is this the moment to get up from that chair or not? If you start listening, you'll just know. You'll know it and it will not be something which is dictated by the ego, but it's dictated by the, the soul. Yes. Keep on practicing the sadhana. It has this faith in yourself that you can act from the truth. Have that faith because that is your original nature anyway as a baby, you know. Thank you so much.